okay so let's do one thing let's add a new project here for ace.net core i'm adding here a ace.net core web application so define application name let's say web app and then i'm using here mvc so what i'm doing here let's first of all let's add the reference of dell layer here i have added the reference of my dell project then i'm just going to perform the crude operation on the product entity so what i'm doing here i'm just adding here mvc controller mt or i can use the mvc controller with read write operation so it will uh, generate the create update delete method for us automatically it's up to you so let's say start with the mt so i'm just adding here let's say product so what i'm doing here i'm just willing to show the list of product here so just do one thing i'm just manually adding some entry here for the displaying purpose later on we will add from the front end sorry i'm adding here a box category my box i'm adding here some product let's say uh, asp.net core book my asp.net core book uh, one let's say 250 rupees this is a single product i added there so for using the database context uh, we need to create the object here so let's say i'm creating the database context class object now please initialize it db equal to new database context i have just initialized it now using the db we will fetch the record so let's define here where data equal to it would be here db then products then there is a method select i'm selecting all the product this way and then convert into the list type to list and what data is coming i'm returning from there and guys here to query the entity framework so there are various syntax you can follow you can follow the meta based syntax you can follow the the query based syntax if you will look into this syntax it is a method based syntax but same syntax i can change and to the query base so let me show you so in place of using this one i can write the query same query let's say from p any name you can give here in db dot products then select p and then convert into the to list and then to list this is the syntax we can also use both are equivalent there is no difference even you can use uh, one more syntax like there is no need to mention his select method in first case i can write the same syntax like this way also don't mention select if you are selecting all the columns just do mention only to list so all these three syntaxes are equivalent to each other there is no difference here if you want to apply the filter then in case of filter you need to mention here let's say where condition so here we need to mention where and p dot what id let's say greater than or like equal to one this is a where condition you can apply the same condition you want to apply here i can apply here let's say where what p dot id equal to equal to one this is the style here if you are willing to use the where condition here so it's up to you whether you are following the query based syntax is the query based syntax either you are following the method based syntax make sense so this is the syntax i'm just using here for fetching all the product so all syntaxes are equivalent it's up to you what you want to use so now here we are just fetching the list of product and for which we need to create the product list view so now let's add a view here template list model class let's say product class i'm using here then click on that button so it will 
use the scaffolding for generating the list of product so here we there is a for each loop uh, which we are using for uh, repeating uh, like treating the list of product here so it is delete edit and delete so let's see let's run the code and it should work fine without any issue so make sure you are setting the web app as a startup project and let's run it so i can go to here the product listing page so so far i have not mentioned anything on the underscore layout so do mention here product index and products list so this is my home this is my product if you will click here i'm getting here the product list perfectly i'm getting the the record as we have in a database so this is the way how you can fetch the record from the database so this is for the retrieving purpose that you can see the listing purpose so what i need to do here i need to create an action now for adding a new product return view create template create model class product so there is id name description in price category id button name i'm defining let's say save and for category id it should be a drop down list so what i can do here i can define a drop down list at the top level and in place of input we should define here a select statement and this like statement i am having a sp4 so we are willing to create a drop down list for category id column and there is a sp das items and here we should define the item here using the view back so there is a view back or you can use view data also and then categories so it is actually it's a new list a new select list and here do mention the category id do mention the name so sometimes unnecessary it give us the error now let's define its post method as well as ttp post and it will be here let's say product view model and then check here if model state dot is valid there we need to write the things so for adding a new item here so what we are using here we are just using here add then call the model then db dot save changes we are doing to save the new model into the product but make sure the every validation is passed and after doing the save changes we need to redirect to the action listing page but here when you are creating that time we need to fetch the product list category list as well so view back dot categories equal to db dot categories and then to list so it will return the list of category and by the way it's going to fail so we need to again bind the category list so here also we need to bind the category list and here also and the same category list we are accessing on the create page using this one asp des items then this new list then value field in the text field and here we can mention the a blank option as well so blank option i can using here empty and then select and then we should define here a class as well for the ui so as we have the class on the textbooks same we class we are defining on the drop down list as well
so this is the way how we bind the drop down list uh, then we have the name category id everything so category id is actually it's a product id is a auto increment column so we don't need to mention we need to mention only name description unit price that's fine a linking we have already done here this using this section so it should now add a new product in the database so let's see how it is working then so let's go to the create page here i forget to remove the input text box so you can see there is a category it's coming it's category id it's coming but if you want to change the label so that option is also available in the dell layer we need to change on the display name for this category id in the product class so there is a display name which you can use for changing the display or you can mention here there directly hard code as well it's up to you so display name that's it is category now it will show us the display name as category not the category id so now you can see it is category not category id we are having name description unit price do select a category let's say books i'm adding here this time as your books let's say 500 let's say cloud computing cloud computing this way now just save it so you can see here it's coming here as your book cloud computing 500 rupees so perfectly we are getting the data here this time we add it from our code same way we can write the code for editing as well if you want to edit any one i'm using here in teaser id in case of edit first of all need to get the product so model equal to db dot products and then where and then use here p dot product id sorry it is id only don't the product id equal to id and what is coming and then first or default and we need to mention the view name because i'm not willing to create the separate view for performing that it operation i will use the existing one so here the view is same which we are using and here in entity framework code there is a new method update so you can call the update method for updating the model and after updating just return to the index page but as per the edit we need to do some changes on the view page so we need to change the title as well so do check if model not equal to null then use here edit as we use here create so this is the title we need to mention here and here also we need to mention so when it is added the action would be added here when it is create action would be create because every time we need to post the data to the specified action if it is create we need to accept on the create action here post the data if it is added we need to accept it on the edit action in this way same way we can write the code for delete also so delete and in delete first find out in the product whether it's available or not if model not equal to null then delete it db dot products and then remove and then db dot save changes and finally redirect to action redirect to the action is index this way or in case of delete i can mention here edit as well as lead id it's here product id sorry it's id only so id equal to item dot id and we can do mention here the html attribute as well so this is my HTML attribute where i'm mentioning on click and it is here let's say return 
confirm and we can mention here are you sure to delete this is the confirm box i want to show here so let's see how it is working in case of edit and in case of delete also so go to the products add it so i'm just editing its value let's say 550 i don't know guys one thing i also missed here when you're performing that it operation and even when you're calling the update method it must have the product primary key until it will not have the product primary key this update method will not be work so here we have not accepting any product id so what do we need to mention here we need to find here a text box for accepting the product primary key so it is here id it should be here hidden field type equal to hidden remove the class now so this is required if you want to perform the update operation and actually when you are having the id so in case of create it's it will apply the validation so it should be here model state and then remove error so please remove the error for the id here so from here i'm just removing the error for id that's it now let's update it 500 to 550 it is 550 if you want to delete it gets deleted now so this is the way how it is working for create edit and delete so guys here you might be thinking let's say if there is a requirement to update only few columns in your product table so this method is not actually applicable so if you're if you're willing to update only few columns so what approach you need to follow you need to first of all fetch that particular record from the database i'm just showing the way if you are willing to update few column so db dot products and then where and then p dot product id so it's id equal to model dot id because id we are getting from the front end now now what are the column you want to update only those columns you need to update here let's say i want to update here so make sure it is here first on default and type is also product so data dot name i want to update so model dot name only name it will update and data dot unit price equal to model dot unit price so only these two columns it will update if you are using the if you're willing to update only few columns but if you're willing to update all columns are you are having the all column information so this is the way because sometimes what happens you need to update only update date like you need to update only a particular flag so this is the approach you need to follow first fetch that one and then update whatever you want to update then call the safety engine method make sense so guys here the crude operation i have done here migration we have also done here next time i will show you the way how we can call the processor and function using the entity framework core